10 Biggest Drug Trafficking Organizations in the World Whether you identify with Al Pacino's character in Scarface or Will Smith's action-packed role in Bad Boys, drug cartel movies hold great elements of excitement, shock, awe, and disbelief. And while these movies are a figment of a writer's imagination, drug cartels are as real as can be and serve as a foundation for many writers' inspiration. For years, governments have tried to suppress and eliminate illegal drugs and spearheaded the War on Drugs campaign. But to this day, illegal drugs are still in circulation. It is quite difficult to get rid of them since these cartels are highly organized and influential. Plus, money is not a problem. They are filthy rich. Howdy doody, better believers! Coming up, we've got the top 10 biggest drug cartels in the world. And yes, it's just like the movies. Many of these groups have committed some heinous acts to preserve themselves. And our number one spot went to great lengths to become, well, number one. So stay tuned to find out some of the crazy tactics they dug into to build their illicit empire. But we'll get to that in a bit. In the meantime, have you ever noticed the number of times the main guy in an action film is tied to a Russian mob? That's why the Soltsentkaya Bravta group occupies our 10th spot. Founded by Mikhailov Sergei, or better known as Mikas during the 80s, this organized group is one of the richest in the world with an annual revenue of $8.5 billion. Its main operation is in the production of cocaine, but they dabble in car smuggling, money laundering, and other legal businesses such as restaurants and hotels. During their rise to power, the group was challenged by the Chechen Mafia, another powerful Russian mob, which triggered a war that took the lives of many individuals. In one encounter with the Chechens, four Russians and six Chechens were killed in a gun battle. To this day, this group is the largest organized crime group in Russia with around 3,000 to 4,000 members and has not been formally charged for their crimes due to lack of evidence. A lack of evidence will definitely keep you innocent, but we can't say the same for our next up. Oh, and before we move too far ahead, make sure to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications or Bach will rise from the dead and eat your face off! Now back to our regular programming. Rumor has it that six members of the next group had their little fingers cut off. Slashing through the ninth spot is the Yamaguchi Gumi. This Japanese organized group is the biggest Yazuka family and one of the wealthiest group globally, having an annual net worth of $80 billion. For those of you who don't know, a Yazuka family is like a mafia family in structure. There is a leader, aka Kumicho, which rules the clan, and he has lieutenants, underbosses, and minor gang leaders under him. Its major operations are in drug trafficking, sex industry, extortion, and real estate, to name a few. It was Harakichi Yamaguchi who founded the group in 1915. True to Yazuka rituals, a member who had sinned needed to cut a portion of his little finger off to atone for his mistake. Ouch. In 2016, four affiliate members of the group were arrested for kidnapping and cutting a finger of Koshin Odake, boss of the Takata Gumi. The Yamaguchi Gumi severed the finger of Odake because the group planned on defecting and affiliating to another clan. But it seems that presently, they do not practice the cutting off ritual for they can be easily identified by authorities because of a severed finger. The members of the Yazuka group in general are continually declining, but the Yamaguchi Gumi is still the biggest among the four clans with 39,000 members. Its operations are not limited to Japan and include the United States as well as the rest of Asia. Our next group is critically infamous. Shooting up our eighth spot is the Nedrangheta. This Italian organized crime group has been around since the 18th century, around the time of leadership of the Baron of Naples. Due to the corruption and incomplete justice system and the monopoly of the barons, the emergence of groups of young men committing crimes became apparent. In recent times, the group is composed of different clans from Calibria, Italy. The most famous and historical boss of the group is Giuseppe Morbito. The Morbito clan started to expand their territory and established a cell in Messina, Sicily. Morbito initiated a joint venture with other families to import cocaine and hashish drugs. Reportedly, the group has an annual revenue of $60 billion coming from cocaine trafficking and some other legit businesses such as restaurants, construction, and supermarkets. And their incoming wealth accounts for 3% of Italy's gross domestic product. Holy crap. Before this group ventured into cocaine trafficking, it used to profit by abducting rich people. They were responsible for the kidnapping of John Paul Getty Jr.'s son, John Paul Getty III, during the 70s and got away with more than $2 million. The Italian government had difficulty infiltrating this group since you only get in by being a blood relative. I wonder if anyone in their family ever wanted to be something else, like a preacher. Our next spot went that route. How can you reconcile religion and drugs? This next organization attempted to do just that. 
La Familia Mikoaken preached its way to the seventh spot. This group was founded by Carlos Mendoza and Nazario Gonzalez and was considered one of the fastest growing Mexican cartels. It produces methamphetamines to sell to the United States. They just love to sell to us Americans. Nazario Gonzalez created his own religion and wrote a spiritual manual. He was viewed by his people as a messiah for teaching religious principles. Apparently his Bible was inspired by John Eldridge's work, a Christianity-based American author. Gonzalez even required the group's members to read Salvaje de Corazón, one of Eldridge's books. As part of his spiritual teachings, he emphasized that mistreating women will be severely punished and drinking alcohol and using drugs among the members is prohibited. Despite their religiosity, this group is considered to be one of the most violent groups. In 2006, in Soli Sombra nightclub, members threw five severed heads with a message. The family doesn't kill for money. It doesn't kill women. It doesn't kill innocent people. Only those who deserve to die. Know that this is divine justice. In 2014, when Mexican authorities located Nazario Gonzalez's hideout, they tried apprehending him, but he opened fire and was killed in the encounter. Carlos Mendoza, on the other hand, was found dead in the western state of Michoacan with gunshot wounds and signs of torture by the police in 2015. With the death of Nazario Gonzalez in 2014 and Carlos Mendoza after he was shot dead in the western state of Michoacan in 2015, the group's operations eventually declined. The Arellano Felix organization, or sometimes called Tijuana Cartel, pushed its way to our sixth spot. The group was bequeathed to the Arellano family when Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo were imprisoned for murdering Kiki Camarena, a DEA special agent in Mexico in 1985. During the 1990s, the group was very aggressive trafficking drugs and presumably allied with Colombian drug cartels. Ramon Felix, one of the brothers and leader of the group, is described as violent in his approach. All these guys got anger problems. In 1998, when a drug dealer had unpaid transactions with the group, Ramon ordered a massacre of the family of the drug dealer, killing 18 individuals. He is adamant in trying to eliminate other drug cartel leaders in Mexico by plotting and carrying out assassination plots. If he can't beat him, kill him. But with the apprehension of the other Felix brothers and the death of Ramon, the influence of the AFO has weakened. Nonetheless, the cartel still continues its operations and has ventured into smuggling of people, kidnapping, and other illegal activities. And we're moving on to our top five, better believers, number five. This next cartel is the epitome of gruesomeness. Mutilating our fifth spot is the Juarez cartel. The group who is headed by Amaro Carrillo Fuentes used to be the principal trafficker of cocaine in the United States. This group was also known for their brutality, their trademark, mutilating the bodies of their enemies and then discarding those parts in public places. The cartel justified their actions as their way of instigating fear in people and authorities who would attempt to get in their way. Amado was called Lord of the Skies for he was able to transport tons of cocaine from Colombia by air to Mexico. In 1997, Amado died while having his 8-hour plastic surgery as confirmed by the United States Drug Enforcement Administration. It was an attempt to change his appearance as he was being chased by the U.S. and Mexican governments. After his death, he left a well-structured organization, but no leader to oversee it. His brothers Rodolfo and Vicente took over, but a power struggle ensued. It has since ended and both brothers, together with their nephew Vicente and Leva, have established a solid command. Number 4 A number of movies and series were based on this cartel. The most recent one was Tom Cruise's American Maid. Landing the fourth spot is the Medellin Cartel. This organization was founded by several Colombians, but the poster child is Pablo Escobar, aka the King of Cocaine. During the 1980s, the height of the cartel's business, cocaine surpassed Colombia's primary product, which is coffee, in exportation. Pablo Escobar was a notorious leader of the group, spearheading assassinations of numerous Colombian authorities, such as the Minister of Justice, Rodrigo Lara, and Attorney General Carlos Hoyos, and indirectly waging a war against the government. This group smuggled large quantities of cocaine to the United States using airplanes. The last of this massive cartel was seen in 1993 as leaders and members of this group were hunted down and killed by authorities in Los Pepes. Los Pepes was a small-scale vigilante group created by Escobar's enemies. Their main purpose was to assassinate Escobar, but they also killed all of his associates. Pablo Escobar was killed in a shootout in 1993 and was named the richest criminal in history, with a net worth of $30 billion at the time of his death. This next cartel started out smuggling alcohol to the United States, but ventured into a more lucrative alternative. 
drug trafficking. Shoving its way into the third place is the Gulf Cartel. This Mexican-based group formed by Juan Guerra used to smuggle alcohol during the 1930s and prospered under the leadership of Garcia Abrego in the 1980s. It was one of the most powerful cartels of the time. In the 1990s, the Office of the Attorney General of Mexico estimated that the cartel was worth $10 billion. Their ties to the Colombian Cali cartel solidified their reputation as the greatest criminal dynasty within the borders of U.S. and Mexico. Due to the success of his business, Abrego was the first ever drug trafficker to have landed on the FBI's most wanted list. The Mexican government offered a reward of $1 million and the U.S. government upped its reward to $300,000 for his arrest. In January of 1996, in a ranch in Monterrey, Mexico, Mexican drug agents charged in the place and arrested Garcia. He was immediately extradited to the U.S. to face charges. After his arrest, he was sentenced to life imprisonment. Another notorious leader took over the organization named Osel Cardenas Gurien. And they're still active, currently located directly across the border of Brownsville, Texas. Yeehaw! Number 2. This next powerful cartel broke away from its original family, the Gulf Cartel. Striking our second spot is Los Zetas. Los Zetas started out as the armed group of the Gulf Cartel. They were hired by Osil as hitmen and bodyguards. But when Osil was captured, members of Los Zetas split up in 2010 and started an independent operation. This group is known for its brutality, like torturing, beheading people, and drawing bloodbaths. These guys were THE reason for the increase of drug-related violence in Mexico. Don't believe me? Well, in August 2010, a mass grave of 72 undocumented immigrants was found. Los Zetas seized and killed these people for fear that the Gulf Cartel would recruit them. Because of their use of violence, other powerful Mexican cartels such as the Gulf, Sinaloa, and La Familia Mikoacan joined hands to eliminate the group. But the group widened their grasp and influence and were difficult to topple. Not only are they into drug trafficking, but also kidnapping, extortion, and assassination. However, in 2012, Alascano, the leader of the group, died in a shootout, and Omar Morales, his successor, was captured. This resulted in the decline of Los Zetas. And now, topping the chart of our drug trafficking cartel list is the Sinaloa Cartel. This Mexican-based cartel was established by Joaquin Guzman, famously known as El Chapo, after Miguel Gallardo of the Guadalajara Cartel was captured. After Pablo Escobar, El Chapo was considered to be the most powerful drug trafficker in the world. The Sinaloa Cartel is a major supplier of cocaine, heroin, methamphetamine, and marijuana in the United States. Apparently, the group dug different tunnels to transport drugs to U.S. soil. And they're known to have bribed numerous people. Just recently, the former head of Mexico's federal investigation agency, Garcia Luna, was charged in the United States for accepting millions of dollars from the cartel to sweep their doings under the rug. El Chapo was captured in 2011, but has escaped from prison. According to the authorities, El Chapo bribed prison employees to sabotage cameras, then hit him in a laundry cart and wheeled him out of prison on a truck. After years of manhunt, El Chapo was apprehended again by Mexican Marines and police with the help of the information provided by the U.S. DEA. In 2014, he was able to flee again through a tunnel that was dug in his cell. In 2016, it was announced by Mexican authorities that El Chapo was captured again for the third time. Despite captivity, Sinaloa Cartel is still operational and is still the biggest drug cartel in the world. So there you have it, better believers. The biggest drug trafficking organizations in the world. Do you know of any others we missed? Let us know in the comments section below. Oh, and if you found this video fun and interesting, check out one of these.